Investors from around the world, welcome to the IR4 podcast. This is Sean Bennett. This is Brian Masterson. I'm Jeremy Newsom, and today we are talking mining. Jeremy, you have such a great radio voice. What? <laughs> you're just investors all around the world. I turn on the switch. You just it just sound happens. Good. Oh, you thanks, sound man. good. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So last time we interviewed this guy, who I love to death. I love these two. Like I'm just happy as can be right now. I'm in the middle of my happy zone. Happy as a clam. Yeah. At the very a clam. At the very end, <laughs> we found out that he mined Zcash. Now I want to preface this entire discussion with I know zero about mine. Well. Zero. On a one to, on a one to ten, I know I know one point eight three. That's it. Mm, Barely a two. Something. Barely a two. I know what mining is to its you know quintessential form. <laughs> Other than that, you guys are going to be learning me a lot today. Teaching so, you, uh, Terry. You're going to be learning you from learning. And we're going to learn you. And I'll I'll teach you, and you learn me. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what is mining? What is in a mining? nutshell, Brian? Give it do to you us. mine? I personally do not mine. Okay. Um, why? Why don't I mind it? It, it takes a lot it's of time. Free money, well, right? No, it's not free money because you're using free money. you're using electricity and power to uh, man. This is let's get down right into the meat. Let's um, go. There's there's mathematical algorithms that computers are solving, and the uh, when the computer solves that algorithm, um, they get rewarded out of a uh, treasury, if you will, or a war chest. So like when I start uh, uh, a uh, War chest, that's the term. War chest. War wow. chest? Wow. Or treasury. Or yeah, really cool. I don't know if they call it war chest. It's a blockchain, it's a blockchain right? Blockchain. Here's the blockchain. <laughs> and it has a finite amount of coins. Yeah. yeah. You can airdrop those coins, so you can just send them to people who okay. sign up, which is sometimes people do 50% of their treasury, they airdrop. Okay. Or then there's this thing called the proof of work. A proof of work is when you actually plug in your node or your computer into uh, the grid and you are solving that mathematical algorithm and getting rewarded for that work that the computer is doing. So are all of the algorithms different, I'm assuming, for each coin? Uh, no. I mean, some are hard. Some are hard forked. Um, oh, man. Uh-oh. Here we go. Let's not go down this road. <laughs> hard fork and fat protocol, man. Right. Yeah. Um, some bad. are hard forked. Some are not. Um, but... How many algorithms are there? Man, I don't know. I, I do know that SHA-256 was the first one used, and that's Bitcoin. SHA-256. That, is there any other coins that use that algorithm? Um, well, I mean, if you're looking at, I don't know the, the technical algorithms of, you know, what exactly they're using when they forked, like, with Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin okay. Gold. But um, what you, there, there is a big difference between uh, the power it takes to mine those algorithms or, or to mine those transactions. For example, Bitcoin only uses ASIC miners. Like you, when it first started out, it was like you plug in, like I remember plugging in my computer and I had to download the whole blockchain onto my computer. And then I could, if I wanted to, start mining Bitcoin. So back in the day, people would mine Bitcoin at their house. With on the CPU. Yeah, on CPU. Yeah. And then when you use a GPU, the processing power is faster. And GPUs is like a graphics card for a gamer. So a lot of like mm-hmm. video gamers use it for, for the speed of the game, right? Well, then eventually um, this group out of China just totally made this rig called an ASIC miner. And it was specifically to mine Bitcoin. And now when you go to a Bitcoin farm, mining farm, you'll just see tons of those things in like a Connex box is like you can buy it. You can buy a Connex box or rent one and have all these ASIC miners in it and then just start running it. But you always want to be able to um, make more in reward of the coin. So that yeah. means if you reward in Bitcoin, you got to go sell it and then you have to pay your electric bill. You never want your electricity and the power you're using to overpower or to uh, overexpense. You know, sure. It's simple business 101. Yeah. You know, lower expense, uh, higher, higher revenue. Yeah. So what? Net. So what about this? So the value of a coin fluctuates. Correct. Yeah, for sure. So the way that you just described it as I do work and I get paid for the time I put in it. Um, but what if you look at it as I'm going to go dig up a bunch of gold because the value of gold is a dollar today. You're going to hold it, and I'm going to hold it for ten years, and now the value of gold is a hundred dollars an ounce. Because yeah. you're controlling the supply. Your right. OPEC. Well, not no, yeah. Well, not only that. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you're creating value in the sense that you deem this worthy enough to hold on to it. True. So that's called a proof of stake. 
And so they do have proof of work, proof of stake. And then there's, um, and what's the new one that just came out? I forget it. Proof of something. But, um, how the world do you involved he, he, But yeah. you're mine Zcash. Yep. And are you using GPUs or CPUs or? I'm using GPUs. Okay. So, so tell us about your setup, your rig. Yeah, why do you, like? How'd you get involved in that? So I, well. Why do you have a GPU? You're just gaming a lot? I don't game at all. He doesn't no, game. He's not a gamer. I'm not a gamer. So uh, a wise man once said, his name's Jeremy Alexander Newsom, <laughs> said, hey, if you're going to own a Tesla, you should own some Tesla stock. Right? Not, I'm not. Sorry, I'm sorry. Tesla, Tesla stock. Don't let me remember about the Tesla and the mining story. Okay. Okay. I'll send you that picture. Okay. Okay. okay, sorry, sorry. So I said, you know what? If I'm going to trade cryptocurrencies, which mm-hmm. I currently do. You're um, doing great, by the way. Thank you. I love it. This guy is genius. I'm sure you are as well. Don't know you well enough. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius too. So I'm sure he is. Just a bunch and of geniuses. So, uh, so I started trading coin, and I've tra- been trading stocks and options for many years. And I said, well, uh, why not dip my toe in mining and mm-hmm. at least learn about how a coin is the way it is and how it gets its value and how people right. come about that beside trading it on the market, right? Just like I think that we as Americans should understand our currency and how mm-hmm. it came to be. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people have, been, have no Very idea true. how the dollar became the dollar, how the euro became the euro, right? They have no idea. And the significance behind that. So I love that history and knowing where things came from and what makes it the way it does, mm. right? Yeah, so sure. interesting. part of my personality is I'm restorative. So I like to take things apart, mm. figure out how they work, yep. put them back together, Same see if way. we can make them stronger. So so as soon as I started trading uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, I said, you know what? Maybe I should figure out how what this mining thing is, right? So I started studying, you know, obviously profitability of mining. Sure. And everybody will tell you, like, Profitability of mining in Bitcoin is very low because the difficulty Correct. level is really high. So you're using a lot of electricity and energy, and you're getting not as much of a reward as you would if Zcash. Absolutely correct. Okay. I'm not. I so say again. I don't mind. I'm not familiar with mining. Yeah, so, so you're asking, more of an yeah. expertise than yeah. I am. Yeah. Yes, and, and I I'd, pause really quick. So when when Sean tell you this, and for the listeners, when he is interested in something, and doesn't know anything about it, just give you an insight into him. He does like just opens up Pandora's box. Yeah, I want to learn everything. And it's diving and right full. In. Yeah, I'm I'm an, I'm competitive, but I love the competition in these yeah. things, not necessarily sports. We like to <laughs> correlate sports competitive. I'm terrible at sports. <laughs> he doesn't do sports except for racquetball. <laughs> Absolutely. And I play to try and like stay fit. So okay. yeah. yeah, terrible. So so you're diving in. You're learning diving in hard, it. right? Yeah. And so I became friends with other people who were miners and just asking them questions. Locally or like on group yeah. chats or what? Yeah, lo- locally. Okay. All the miners that I know mine within the southeast of the United States. Okay. And some of them range from, I have, they have five miners to like 400 miners. Wow. Now, you know, when big you, farms. When you say miner, is that like an individual computer? Yeah. Is that what that's Individual. One unit. One, one unit. One node. What? One miner. What, what were those numbers again? So anywhere from a, a couple of miners like to up to, to about four hundred. Oh, and there's the there's there's farms in the southeast. Lots of them, yeah. Really, um, hundreds of miners. You know what might be a good idea, and they might like this, is if we do you, are your rigs here. Um, in the in 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 not in here. They're not the in house. Here. They're in the house, but we can't show them. No, we can't film them. Currently, not no, we can't. Okay. But trust me. We'll talk off camera about that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, right. I come from a background of cooling and heat and energy, right? And w- the, what I do in a day-to-day business, that factors into a lot of what I do uh, professionally. Okay. So, I think a big challenge in this world of mining is that, electricity and heat. And I, I would venture to say that uh, most mining farms are very inefficient and they don't know how to tackle that problem. All mm. they know how to do is put money into a miner and plug it in. Mm. Yeah, everyone. That's not it. That's, that's, not, not, that's, that's not, too easy. That's too easy. That's not the way. It's inefficient, it's, right? Yeah, so you use cool settings. Correct. Well, here's part like of Iceland. Absolutely. That's a big one. Largest, one of the largest Bitcoin mines in the world. Ethereum. Is Ethereum. Ethereum. Okay. Well, he was up there and that's starting to be an. Uh, very significant player in their yeah. uh, country's economy. So you'll economy. see this. Even in China, they put these big farms on top of mountains yep. where there's airflow and they're open air mm. mines. So it's not so much just cooling it. It's having the circulation airflow. to get the air out. Yeah. It's not just putting cool air in. You, know you got to get the hot air out. Mm. And what a lot of these people are doing is they'll come into a room that we're in, like this space, 
they're going to stack a bunch of miners and they're going to like pump <laughs> as much HVAC as they can in and return the air at, or return the air and cool right. it. So inefficient because then what they're mm. doing is they're cooling a big. Sp- they're trying to heat cool a big space and not a miner. Interesting. I didn't think about that. You know, now that you say that, there is a great. Uh, I think it's a Vice a little short five ten minute documentary on Vice about um, a Chinese mining farm. And when I watched it, the whole place was just wide open and the windows were. All, I'm like, what? Yeah, it's an open I mean, air farm. I thought mm. they, but I thought they were trying to cool it, but they're actually trying to cre- create circulation. Yep, the, the circulation naturally cools. They don't have to run HVAC. Mm. They're running it, but they don't have the humidity issues that we have here in the South. Yeah. Yeah. Which will terrible. I know a guy who's mining in Florida, like in that heat. Brutal. His miners are outside. Wow. And they're breaking and breaking and breaking. Terrible, because heat kills everything. Heat and water. Water will just ruin things. So let's talk about efficiency, right? Yes. That's what we're on. So efficiency. (laughs) So if, let's equate this to if you're freezing cold, you're in a hypothermic state. What's the quickest way to warm you up? Um... Hyperventilate. Nope. Drink hot water. Nope. You take somebody else's body heat. Mm, right? So they say if you're if you're it's trapped in the wilderness, it's my speed. Get naked. Body heat will warm you up faster than I'm anything. I'm not going camping with you. So I I would venture to say, hey, would the quickest way to be able to put to put your body heat with somebody else or to go put you in a warm room. Mm-hmm. It would take you longer to heat up okay. in a warm room. Yeah. That's what they're doing with miners. These miners, it's the opposite. They're putting off all this heat, but they're trying to cool them down by taking this hot element, putting it in a cool room. But if you were to cool that one individual piece, mm-hmm. it'd be so hot. So and, and you just and you just do that with air circulation, but more natural air circulation blowing through. More you do, so you do it with water cool? Do you do anything with water cool? Nope. So you need to put them Ooh. in a, a smaller confined space. Okay. And you cool the smaller space, not the larger. So how space. do you cool? How can you cool the smaller space without open air, to to make sure it's more efficient? So you, can you do it with water? Because I'm also thinking another way to really heat up yourself is to use like one of those solar blankets to keep the heat in, and now you're regenerating your body heat. Absolutely. How can you re reinverse engineer that for a specific miner? Because then you may be onto something that. Every miner in the world would probably want to utilize. So, yeah. So it's basic physics, right? So most of the miners that I know that have these large farms have big rooms. They have lots of HVAC units. Mm-hmm. You no know, guy's got 20 plus HVAC Ooh. units. Wow. So his bills are massive. Right. Up there. Because he's trying to cool and recirculate this hot air. So the idea is to take this miner or box, put multiples of them in a close, close proximity, and cool that unit, mm-hmm. or put multiples of those units in a smaller space and cool that. Well, then, yeah. So you're not putting them. Most people, what they do, they think it's more efficient, is they set all these things in rack on a rack right. or a shelf, right. and then it blows hot air, which collects, and then you have to cool out all of the other space of around it. it. Mm. Think about all the cubic, How cubic feet, feet that the they're the trying air. to cool beyond what the one place. Cool. So inefficient. It really is a ratio um, understanding of what... How many single units can you cool to, and not use an, as as much energy, or you know the the ratio of I'm going to use this much energy and this is what the output's going to be, versus because obviously we know that a big room's uh, inefficient, but what if you get down to one cooling box for one miner? Yep, have that's you, it. Have you done that? Or a system. That cools. Right. So I have seen where some of these guys have built these systems out of PVC pipe. They'll mm. have a, a, a high blower that will take cool air, and they, it, what happens is they'll put uh, a fitting on the front of the miner because that's the intake fan, and I'll then a fitting tips. on the back. And all you want to do is you're just trying to cool the, cool those chips in that motherboard as quick as possible. So mm. you got you got mm. cool air coming in, and it's taking the hot air coming out the back end. Just moving it out. And you necessarily don't even have to pipe cool in to cool it. Pipe in cooling. All you have to do is pipe in colder air than the than the unit is producing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how, yeah. how'd you build your miner? Okay, so the so my miner is is a G, is GPU based on mine Z. Which means what? What's GPU stand for? for it's people g- graphics processing unit. Okay. Graphics processing. As you mentioned. Right? So um uh, the the w- reason why I went to GPU units and not an ASIC miner. Which ASIC means what? I don't know what it means. Do we know? 
ASIC is A uh, C I S and I can uh, or A S I C and I know the. Um, I need somebody to no, fact check that. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had I I have. It's it like in, a robot. It's, it's, <laughs> don't turn it's robot somewhere in here. Okay, I know. We'll I know. figure it yeah, out. Later. It's the processing okay. chip. It's an ASIC yes. chip. Is yeah. what it is. I didn't know if it stood for something specific. Yeah. So it's just the type of chips that we're talking about. Yeah, GPU correct. versus ASIC. Is there any other type of chips you can use? Uh, CPU. CPU. Just standard computer. Yeah. So okay. those are the three main types of chips. Are there any other ones? I not that. I'm aware of. Okay. No. So you yeah. use a GPU. Yep. So the reason why like I would say most people aren't mining on a CPU and Bitcoin on CPU is that the ASIC miners are just a lot faster. They have a faster hash oh, yeah. rate, right? Yep. And a hash rate means at the amount of work that they're able to do. How fast Correct. they're able to do work. So when I explain what a miner does, like my father in law is like, Hey, well you have a miner? It's a computer, right? So think of it this way, when when the gold rush came to the United States and you said, Hey, there's a, a gold, a product in mm -hmm. the ground, mm -hmm. and you can have some of it, but you have to show up and dig and dig and dig until you, maybe you find something, right? And that's what I do. I just do it electronically. Yeah. And how how'd you build it? Like, what was the process? So the way I mine Zcash, I mine GPU based means I built a built a miner, and what I did is I you took hand built this. Yeah, I built it. Yeah. So I took a motherboard and a computer. Yeah, with my and hands. Some, probably some soldering and some. <laughs> no, no, it's all it's all plug and play connections. So, with the exception of putting the processor on the motherboard. So if anybody's ever built hmm. a computer, it's pretty much building a computer. Yeah. But I use a specific motherboard that allows me to have a lot more PCIe connections, meaning I can connect the GPUs. These graphics cards, which are about yay big or more, they have a fan on them and they do all the processing power. And I plug that graphics card into the motherboard. In a traditional computer, you may would only have two or three slots, right? Yeah. Right. This one has... You would have one graphics card and then you may put like motherboard. some other type of card in there. Maybe it's some different types of connections to connect uh, the uh, mouse or... The monitor or whatever. Something. Yeah, absolutely. But what this miner a miner is built is I can put like 13 GPUs. Because this motherboard is mm. serving no wow. other purpose nope. than simply just mining. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so how do you... So you so You're doing an email on this computer. Nope. You okay. have the mining rig set up. Yep. It's just running Windows. Well, you... Okay, it's running Windows. It's running Windows. I had no idea that Windows... So if you looked at it, it's just a regular <laughs> computer if you yeah. plugged a screen into it. So what I've done is I have a piece of software that I control all of these GPUs. So what I've done is... Did you have to go into the... So did you have to connect that monitor somehow through well you have to be connected to the internet but you yeah. pull up your browser internet yep. explorer if it's microsoft right yep. you got an internet explorer you download the software yep. which controls all the miners and then you open up the software and yep go so what happens is i have i run two pieces of software the first one is software that controls my gpus mm -hmm. because the way that gpus come factory stock they're built for video gaming so the the right. The uh, the settings on that card are made to be optimized for uh, video gaming, which doesn't necessarily make sure it means it's optimized for mining. Right. Right. So there's like core clock speed, there's temperature or fan speed, there's a memory a memory clock mm. on there as well. There's power output. In the software you're talking. In about. the software, so I control like all engine. these on this every single GPU, right? And so what I've done is I've run a bunch of different tests to say, solid. how can I get the most amount of output out of this card with the least amount of power? So that's actually hmm. probably proprietary. You figured you have figured out the well, most for my miner, correct? For your miner, you figure yeah. out the most efficient <laughs> way to manipulate that GPU or that graphics card to so outpost infer, yeah. the most that's, return. That's IP versus, that's so versus yeah versus just, someone who's saying, okay, I'm gonna plug this in, plug this in, okay, go. You are actually manipulating right. the graphics card to make them better. Better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Which ultimately Let's start selling this stuff. <laughs> ultimately, is, which is what these Chinese company like a like yeah. a Bitmain, they created an ASCII miner. They pre-programmed all those settings in to where you can't right. mess with it. Right. And the only piece of software that you technically run with that type of miner is your 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 connection software to the pool. Right. And so, but I'm, yeah, let's so, let's so like you just said a very important word for mining and i think that we need to talk about that mining pools mining pools okay so what what happens is this <clears throat> hold, on, hold on jeremy go yeah. ahead are you lost yet i'm a little bit lost okay. let's back up okay. just like 24 seconds whoa, 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 okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. let's not go down <laughs> that hole yet <laughs> what can we we're gonna go down yes we're actually gonna hit okay. pools in a second i think okay. it's very important to say but i just want to make two notes before we move into that direction notes. one 
Did you see that picture I sent you the other day? Okay, so you sent me a picture of a Tesla car engine mining I, I, something? I, no, they put they put some GPUs in the back of a Tesla, connected it to the Tesla, and then were parked at like a... Fr- you know where you can get the plug-in oh, yeah. for the yeah. energy? Yeah. They were mining out of a Tesla connected to a free <laughs> plug-in spot. Genius. And uh, did Elon Musk, I think, retweeted that. I don't know. Maximum I think hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. You thought, thought it was very funny. Max did it work would be my question. Do you think that would work? Oh, yeah. Or is it Probably. a uh, yeah, you have to generate <coughs> power, but you could be. Yeah, it could work it out. And uh, the wow. second thing I want to say is, I think I told you. We're this. gonna we're gonna link a picture of that. You're gonna. I think you're gonna like this. I so I contacted the Tennessee Value Value Authority. Okay. You know the dam that's run over there and yep, wherever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. I want to install some rigs over there, renewable energy. Why not? We're working on it. Uh-oh. I love that. Uh oh. You're not even in mining, but you are in mining. Uh oh, it's about to happen. <clears throat> I'm flying. We're gonna need up your here. help. We're gonna need your help. I touch that. down I'm sometimes. Ready. I touch down, <laughs> and I'm okay. flying up here, and I'm trying to find the best spots, and then I'll come down and touch down. Yep. So you know what I you do? Eat, I'm, I'm eat, pushing the plane from listen, the back. Dude. You That's eat bald I'm eagles <laughs> eggs for breakfast. And I, I like, eat bald eagles and, eagle. and I like it. Freedom. Freedom. You just reign freedom. Like, back to back world champions. Freedom. Boom. You win at life. That's what you do. Hashtag winning. I love it. I love it. All Man, right. So uh, hydrogen power or hydronic. Hyd- <laughs> hydro, the word. Hydroelectric. Hydroelectric <laughs> mining. Hydronic. What is it? Which, but, which, word. There are good. there are there in China. There you are uh, utilizing uh, hydroelectricity to mine as well. Sure. Yeah, of course. You know, because there's some like old warehouses by these dams and by these rivers, and it's just like. They're going to sit here empty. So is that what a mining pool is? A a hydroelectric miner? No. No, it's not. (laughs) No, but I'm glad that's so. Now we can go to mining pools. Mining pools. That was a water pun, by the way. You got that right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I understand. Come on. Making sure you're tracking with this guy. (laughs) Mining pools are not, instead of a river or a dam, it's actually like a swimming pool. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm I'm messing with you now. You're joking. A big swimming pool. A mining pool is just... um, and you could probably articulate better, but my conception of a mining pool is you are paying a certain amount and you're actually like renting space. You can either do one of two things. You can rent space in some of these mining farms and like you technically rent that those specific units mm. and whatever it whatever however much you're contributing oh, into keeping those units running, you whatever percentage of that, you're getting that percentage of return uh, when the mining pool's rewarded. Or, and you're going to have to articulate on this, or you contribute some of your hardware, so let's say your your uh, your rigs, and you can say, oh, I'm going to join a mining pool, and you can designate your rigs to a mining pool. For them pool. to use. And now it's just yeah. like this global uh, pool. Be oh, thinking it's... about all the scams out there about mining pools while he's answering There's that question. There's a lot out there. Yeah, start thinking yeah, about absolutely. that. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, I think there are two separate things. First thing you talked about with cloud mining, like with a company like Genesis. So it'd be, okay. hey, there's a cloud company mining. that has all the miners. Well, you're you're pretty yeah, much yeah. you're paying to fund to buy more miners, and you get a percentage cloud of that. Cloud mining. I don't. So all you're doing think, is you're putting in money as, as a. Investor. You're investing. Okay. You're investing into a mining farm. I've seen so many scams with that. Uh, yeah, there's I would tons. say stay away from it. The return on investment's not that good. I don't care what YouTube video you watch. What are we it's talking about? That you, you think like, a very very small return on 8% investment. Eight percent a year. Again, again, no, no. I would say go put your money in. No, you maybe one or two percent. It's so a year. Yeah, it's, no way. It's so. You would do that. Low. That's miserable. You just buy the the crypto. But they want to. They want to be. They want to be in mining. Oh my god! Yeah, that's they're gonna get that's in. They're, brutal. They're, these these 1%. people. These people. I mean, they're getting money back, but they're leveraging like, and these websites are very scammy. Like you buy are. tier one, buy tier two, buy tier three. You're gonna get this much. Uh, and they give yeah. you hashing power. Hashing power. You're gonna yeah. get this much hashing power depending on what tier this is. This is fifty dollars a month. This is hundred dollars a month. Why do they always talk about referrals? Get people in on this, like because it's an MLM. It's it's, it's a MLM. multi-level yep. marketing. So they're scheme. making their, they're making their money on quantity. Yes. Um, so yeah. I would say stay away from cloud mining, but mining in a pool is the equivalent of, like I made the analogy early, hey, you're going to go dig for gold, and if I dig something up, I get paid for it. I love it. that analogy. I have to like not work a job anymore, right? So I have to go dig for gold every day. Some people can't afford to not dig it up and take the gold and exchange it for money to eat. Or they may never find it. It's very true. So let's work as a team here. Yeah. So what happens is when you join a pool, you're saying, I'm going to go with, you know, 100 other people. We're going to mine in the same area. Mm -hmm. And then when we find 
uh, some gold, we're going to split that up depending on how powerful you are, right? If you're if you're a, an 80-pound lady, you're not going to dig as fast or as hard or have as many tools as, you know, a 300-pound guy who's, like, bulked up who's going to, like, Just outwork you, right? So where would you – where would you – are you part of a mining pool? I am. Where would you fall Several. on the scale? An 80-year-old lady or, like, the beast mode? <laughs> or um, Brian Masterson of lacrosse? Where I mean, <laughs> I'm like a, I'm a 20-year-old stud, you know? That's okay. Killing it. Yeah. Solid. So, uh... So, so we're on, on par with that, though, question. I didn't even think about this. You could mine and not find anything. That's possible? How's that possible? Um, you're... Depending on what pool you're in, you could mine and not get as much return. But well, not much get much return, return. Could you not find anything at all? Not possible. Okay. Uh, not, I haven't seen that to be the case. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. But you will see in the in, in the future. In the future, it's, happening. it's just it's, it's just, gonna happen. It's just like gold. It'll it be is harder and harder. a finite amount. It's gonna be yeah. harder and harder and harder. It's not gonna find and it. what are they doing now? If you, do you know what gold miners do now? Actual gold miners. I have no idea. Never been one. They um they collect dust and they do they get nanoparticles of gold. And they take it out. Of, that's how sophisticated gold mining is now. Wow. Yeah, wow. And it's going to get and it's going to get more harder sophisticated and harder, and harder and harder. Yep. The more uh, we go along down so, this road, so which you, I love. Yeah. So as you speak about harder and harder and harder, I get difficult. about nineteen emails a day uh, asking this exact question: Should I still mine Bitcoin? Should I still mine Ethereum? And I'm just telling people no. I just say no. I don't even know that much about it. But I say no. I'm assuming. It's very difficult, very expensive, very challenging to start mining Bitcoin and Ethereum because you missed the boat. Your feet are wet. Your knees are wet. You're, you're drowning, actually. The I boat's dis- gone. I disagree. Okay. So, so, uh, so uh, teach me why well, could you get into Bitcoin? Okay, so you agree and I disagree. Why? Some of that is probably based on the coin. So, or the amount of money? Very or? Yeah. Veracoin. Veracoin. V-E-R-I-C-O-I-N. Veracoin is a CPU mineable coin. You can run, you can mine Veracoin on your computer. But that's not Bitcoin, though. It's not Bitcoin. It's another coin. But that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about actually mining the, the granddaddy. Oh, mining Bitcoin, yes. Uh, it's profitable depending on how much investment you want. Yeah, but I'm, not talking about, time. I'm not talking about In mining. I, mining works. I'm talking about specifically mining Bitcoin and Ethereum. Is that a waste of time or should you go focus on something else? Because I, I think it's. I think you're missing the I, one. I think on the, the return ones. on investment in Bitcoin, you shouldn't mine Bitcoin. Give me an idea. You what? should trade Bitcoin. So let's say I have 100000 You want to make 000, money? Trade Bitcoin. 100000 on cash. I want to get in. What will my return look like if I want to mine, let's say, Bitcoin and then a few other coins? So, Just give me some examples. So, and I can't speak to some of the other because I don't mine them. Okay. Zcash, fair. one miner, generates an 8% return every month. Okay. There's nothing in the world currently that's safe that I don't have to put any of my time into that will give say- me an 8% return on investment of capital. When you say 8%, you're spending $100 a month on electricity? Where do you, where are you, so where's the where's so the, and and you're and so therefore you would so be no, making no. sixteen dollars. So if I put X amount of money into this miner, ten bucks, ten dollars, right? More than ten. Well, After for, keep it. Keep let's it say if I say I'm gonna, I can build a miner for ten dollars. Okay. After electricity, after the cost of running the miner, I'm generating an eight percent return on the ten dollars a month. That's a 96% return a year. I yeah, almost huge. pay for my investment in year a year, one, year in one. year one. Yeah, which is huge. Currently, that's where that stands. It fluctuates a little bit depending on difficulty and also depending on the value of the coin that you mine. And so I'm assuming Correct. you have to run this 24-7, 365, Correct. right? Runs okay. all the the, the thing is, well, you don't is, have to, but if you unplug it, true. you're not you're not paying for power. Then. But now, it's, the, it's the return on time, right? Correct. Everything else requires time you to power. go work, right? Your return on time is left, right? That's why the stock market's so beautiful. People love it. I'm going to go passive. put money into it. It's passive And income. it's just going to generate me income. That's why people love that as an investment vehicle. Dividend. Can I go make more money somewhere else? Absolutely. Sure. But then I have to probably invest my time into that. Things. More time. And honestly, that's the most valuable investment we have. I'm writing a book on it. So just saying. Yeah. We did discuss that. Last we did yeah. discuss. Yeah. Just yeah. But you did put some time. To come out. You did put some time in learning how to build the rig and how to do all that. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. do you feel like you have received your return on the investment? Absolutely. Good. Good so, so why'd you choose eCash? I like it because it's a coin. Stellar. It's a coin specifically based around GPU mining, okay. which I like because I can build control. that machine. Yeah. Okay. I can control. So it's harder it. to build an A6 miner. You can't. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody in the. Well, I'm not gonna say nobody. 
There are a couple companies. There's some nerds out there. Yes. <laughs> I would say that that's currently why the, the Chinese market is dominating ASIC miners because they build them cheaper and they have the software and technology to build it way cheaper than we can in America. Mm-hmm. Oh, so on that note, I want to talk about investing. How do I get my money into that? So I want to know, you're talking about China building these ASIC miners, other companies. What companies are producing the chips? How do I, as a stock trader, invest in these companies that are making the mine? Because obviously there is, mm-hmm. there's demand here. Should I be buying HVAC unit companies? Should I be buying electricity companies? How do I make money? Because I missed the NVIDIA run. I, for yeah. some reason, I'm an idiot. I didn't put two and two together. Four years ago, Bitcoin's doing its thing. And I'm like, I didn't even think, you know, who's building all the miners? What companies? What computer parts? Like, I missed out on like 500%, dude. NVIDIA was going crazy. Big, 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 big gains in that world. So I missed all of it. I just didn't put the puzzle together. Honestly, my feedback is if you want to be in that game, you should trade cryptos. So just straight up create, trade the actual cryptos. I believe that it's, I don't think that the market for the companies that build miners is going to become large enough for it to be really investable. Mm. Agreed. But I do think the market <laughs> for cryptocurrencies is, and it's already proven to be. Look at, if I could put money into, like, if I could trade Coinbase. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would, heavy. Think about that, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah, went from. None of those are public yet. A hundred mm-hmm. plus thousand no. users in the spring when we were dealing yeah, with we this. Were, yeah, we millions got, now. We Think got about in, that. We got in real easy. It was simple for us to get in. So easy. Yeah. So I'm like, if I could invest in Coinbase, I want to be in Coinbase. Do you think they go public? No. No. Someone Either do I. Someone nope. buys them. Somebody's going to acquire them or they're going to merge. Think so. Absolutely. I think uh, if oh, you're being really honest, you're going to have a massive hedge fund or bank. How are you gonna pro- how are you gonna properly evaluate users? Coinbase? Easy, dude. Amount of users. Yep. Uh, how how because I mean, you're getting commissions like just like yeah. Schwab, just like TD Ameritrade. I mean, all the people there. If you have here, here's business rule one on one. If you have a hundred thousand people in any one spot, you are a business now. You have a legit way to make money. And they have millions. Now. So I think the missing market for these brokers currently, to be honest, Let's is hear. platform. Oh, exchanges. They're uh, all missing this piece, right? And none of this that. is shortable. <laughs> No, it's what? No, well, it's shortable. It is if you have enough money. Um, you, you have to have, you have to have okay. enough play. Yeah. So I think that's the missing link right now, and that could be a big monetary but, play to move. So when the futures are hitting, so we have yeah. C- Chicago Board of Option Exchange. Need to be in all these like secret things that are going on. Chicago Dang Board it. of Option Exchange Dang and the Nasdaq. I mean, they're building, they're, they're getting the, uh, they're approving futures on Bitcoin. It's happening so already. That's, that's a huge. Stamp, that's the stamp of legitimacy. It's a big so, deal. So what I'm it's not going to burst. Today's announcement. I'm telling people. JP Morgan. It's not a bubble. It's not a burst. <coughs> it's not. Jamie Dimon not. was poo-pooing Bitcoin Smart. a couple months ago. Smart. You know, and you so know he it's, bought it and he got it, and now they're all on board. So <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So what I believe is going to happen. Let's hear it. Oh yeah, predictions. Is I that love predictions. now? I love predictions. Zcash is going to become big, new Bitcoin. No, maybe. No, I no. hope it does. I'll oh, make a lot of it's money. Not gonna happen. Uh, uh, there's a new forex market that's coming into play. I just talked about this today in my trading room. No, you're 100 percent correct. So for for forex is foreign exchange. I know. It okay, is. sorry. So I was gonna say like you know the British pound, the euro, the U.S. dollar. You the can ruble. trade that. Sure, you can trade the ruble. Um, and some some platforms recognize Bitcoin. They do. They do. Uh, not not many, all crypto. Uh, not not many. Most a lot of Canadians, uh, Canadian markets will Australian, some some European right now. But what's happening is we've literally created an entire different market so what we have now, market now so you have stocks we're going to have stock well stocks and options you have bonds you're going to have currency you're going to have commodities you're going to have futures and you're going to have cryptos what are cryptos uh, you're but, saying it's no, a new asset class it's, yes it's going to be an entirely separate it's going to be a new exchange it, yes it'll all it's be not going to be forex it's a new it will not be forex no. it won't be controlled by central banks or the government it's going to be an entirely different i, class. I agree with that but i disagree <laughs> i disagree with you calling it uh they're not they're not they're nor currencies they're not currencies. Digital They're assets. Commodities okay. or securities. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. And both are already regulated. Right. In but, our system. But it's gonna be a new asset class, is what I'm getting at. It might not be a currency, but that's what I'm saying. That's why if, if anything, that's a better argument for why it's gonna be an entirely different market. Because yep. they're not currencies. Forex is currency. For, forex is currencies. So But it's, then it's just like trading commodities or securities. No, because it's also currency a little bit. I mean you can pay with it. It's hard to it's hard to pay for anything with orange juice, which is a commodity. 
or pork bellies, which is bacon. Like it's hard to pay for things like that. So it's it, stock it has, because you don't have a percentage of something else. No, I, I agree with you. Trust me. Like I said, that's that's why I would, it's an is a whole another asset class that we're we're legitimizing yes. currently. But nobody knows that that's actually happening. Who do you guys think regulates then? Hold on, I get to that. So when when earlier, remember when we said the first broadcast, what age are we in? That's why I said like we're in like this new age. What's of, our age again? What's your age? I love again? that song. Love that song. song. Good song. We're we're changing, like just the way currencies and assets are things. Like this is a new. If you change money, you change the world, right? Once Which money is, starts yes, changing, yep. totally, the world. So that's totally why I said, agreed. That, so anyways, and it's happening right now. So who regulates it? Um, there's going to become a new regulatory body. Uh, and you talked about it in previous podcasts. I mean, it could be that one, right? It could be the TXSRB. Yeah. But I believe that things are moving into the SEC and CTFC. They're going to have to be a different body because it's, it can't be just U.S.-based. SEC is U.S.-based only. They 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 try to extradite people off seas all the time. They can't do it. it that's U.S.-based. So U.S. is small, man. You're talking all, all the countries in the world are going to be on this. So I mean, it's not going to be the IMF. Well, at least, God, I hope not. No, I hope not. That would be the point. Of I don't all, think it will. That's the point of all of this. No. So there has to be a new regulatory yeah, it body. It literally created. goes against everything. You guys want to create one? Yes. <laughs> What's the um, the uh, now you're talking? Now we're oh, talking. Man. Woo! I like this. I had that's these good. notes. I had these notes down a couple months ago. The um, ISO, maybe the International Standardization Organization, and there is a dedicated group led by an Australian banker for blockchain technology. Mm. And the ISO, what they do is standardize new, they put new standards into play across the world. So they're not, the SEC put in standardizing how to trade securities or what is a security, what's not a security, but this ISO is like the ultimate group to implement best practices. And they have a holy, whole uh, dedicated committee for the blockchain working on that now. Actually, they announced it in November. I'm behind the I got to go. I got to yeah. go read this report. I forgot about that. You sound like Peter Pan. Out. I'm out of time. I got to go. I got to get or, out of here. Oh, that's uh, um, Alice Wonderland, whatever. But yeah, that's, uh, I can't believe I forgot about that. Yeah, big deal. Big deal. Um, but one another thing about the okay. renewable energy, uh, sun mining. Sun mining, you can actually mine Bitcoin through, or not sure. Bitcoin, not Bitcoin. You can mine, in general, through uh, solar panels. Imagine sure, that. Sure you yep. could. Imagine the possibility of solar panels. Sure you could. So off camera. And net metering. Off camera, we were talking about um, Iceland. And when I was up in Iceland, yeah. we talked about Ethereum mining. And, and what I was seeing while I was in Iceland was this. Uh, again, I don't know personally if it's free. It's at a very, very, very reduced rate. But most energy is free over there because it's geothermal. It comes right from the ground. Okay. So, and when you say geothermal, how does that actually work? Just steam? It gets hot underneath like yeah, from a yeah, volcano abso- and steam comes absolutely. up? Absolutely. Yeah. From pure heat under the ground. And so, nice. again, it's not all entirely just subsidized government sure, sure. free. But yeah, people are paying for certain things. But it's very, very, very cheap. Very it's cost very efficient to mine. And so and when I'm up there, um, the winds are 55 mile an hour winds. It's an island on the ocean. But it's a big island, by the way. But you're right. So what I'm bringing out is that's like that efficiency he's talking about. Like they're using the wind power, right? They're using geothermal. Yeah, geothermal to, for extremely low. And so I'm looking at Ethereum, which is actually there are Bitcoin farms in Iceland, but there's more Ethereum farms, and they're very, very secure. Um, first class, first world country, man. Way more expensive than the U.S. And what I'm saying is the Icelandic currency more valuable than the U.S. currency, and Huh. With that mining that's going to be happening, that's going to just, I think, raise the value of Ethereum through the roof because I mean, they're just doing such an incredible job at it. You're already seeing that. So I, I have a, several friends that trade Litecoin now. Well, I'm now on all these streams for these these Chinese companies that build miners. These streams? What do like, you mean? Uh, like Slack, Telegram? Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm on all Twitter, these. Twitter, Facebook? Think, yes, all the above. That, that that alert me when they're releasing new batches of miners. Okay. So I think you're seeing a trend. Currently, all of these Chinese companies have halted production on every miner except one miner that they're all building as many as possible. And I, when Come they're, on. When they're Conspiracy releasing... Conspiracy theory. <laughs> no. <So they're laughs> it now, sounds like it. So they're now releasing... When, when they release a batch, they're releasing batches of loads of these miners. Okay. Well, so, 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 hold on. 
What do you say a batch of miners? What what is that even? So there, this the factory puts out and says we've got ten thousand miners okay. we're, that we're going to sell. So they build them in batches because they can't just like have them on a shelf and you just buy them. There's so many people buying and getting into mining now oh that gosh. they're buying these by the hundreds. Oh my god! And you can't even like they're Ugh. like specifically with this one site. You can sit there and they say we're going to release at this time. You can sit there and hit the Boom. refresh button and you can't even get a miner. Wow. One. They're in that high demand. Wow, wow, wow. And wow, currently, wow. the new hot miner that it's nobody can Ethereum. get is Litecoin. It's for Litecoin. Litecoin. I believe that 100%. I'm so, a, what, when you're. I'm when Lightning Network. Baby. Back during the gold rush, and I think Jeremy and I talked about this a little bit. in our first or second podcast. Like, well, this, this is the whole point of the Industrial Revolution 4.0. When you went back into the gold rush days, and you need to transport gold. You need the, that's how the railroad system's being built, transport. There's all these crazy things happening in this new age, right? Yeah. And we're in that same thing. But when you're when everyone's mining gold and someone across someone comes across some silver and I'm like, hey guys, look at this. Wouldn't you say Litecoin is like the silver of gold? So here's my take. Sure. I think Bitcoin is like gold. I gold think, standard, baby. I think Litecoin is silver and I think Ethereum is the bond market. Oh, interesting! I like that. The bond like market because it's an entirely different. It's a fat protocol. Correct. It's way different. Wow! Way. I mean, Ethereum, I did just kill a yeah, bump, yeah, but yeah. So I think that right now the market of cryptos is so heavily the markets on Bitcoin, which I think the rise in Bitcoin price is because of popularity and market exposure. Sure. I don't think the market's exposed to Litecoin, but I think there's now enough people mining it. And that the scarcity of that coin is gonna is catching oh, will man. catch up to Bitcoin yeah, within I, the next year or two. And I think I personally believe why I'm heavy in Litecoin is that really we are gonna good. see in the next year or two. We're gonna mark my words on this podcast. It's gonna go from a hundred to a thousand or two thousand prediction. And you know we have a in lot a of year them. in in the next two years. Two years. Okay. okay. Two years. Hold on. Look at this. If I you go back, if you go back and look at Ethereum, Ethereum in one month went from forty dollars to four hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. In one month, nobody would have ever predicted that type of no. move in Ethereum. And here's the funny part: is I that's was, not even a coin. Sean, I was trading that too. That's the funny part. I traded that move, and I bought around eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Kept buying, kept buying, and I sold around forty-ish. And I was like, I'm a god. I'm the king of yeah. trading. No one can touch me. Four hundred. <laughs> Four hundred, and then yeah, and then it went up to four. Dude, it was at like eighty within an hour after I sold it. I was like, shoot, and then it was like one hundred twenty. I was like, what's going on? So I, Mark, I'm telling you, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's fact. Miner, the, the production of physical mining machines for this coin yes. is now start. You're seeing the trend like you did with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, it started as jump drive CPUs, mm -hmm. and then they came out with these ASIC miners, and now people are buying warehouse fulls. The same trend is happening in Litecoin wow. with these ASIC miners. Yeah. You just haven't seen the value of the coin catch up Yet. to this. Correct. But give it a year or two. You're hearing it here first. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a thousand over a thousand dollars within yeah. I would say oh in the next year. Actually, so. I, you know what? Um, see, I can see it doubling. I'm I'm very very uh, conservative in my predictions when it comes to other coins. With Bitcoin, I'm just like let's go. But when it comes to other coins, I obviously am, I'm, 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 I'm on the Ethereum train. Um, but I also uh, have been starting to thinking Litecoin just because it's oh taking on the mechanics of a of a silver. It is. And think and think of the what was I, I I have it on my Facebook. I think we shared it on IO4 podcast. <clears throat> JP Morgan's calling that Bitcoin is the, the digital gold. gold. They are calling yep. it digital gold. Yep. So we are going back to a gold standard. And maybe the – look at Venezuela. Venezuela is releasing yep. a cryptocurrency that is benchmarked on the petrodollar. Yep. These countries will start creating their own digital assets. But where – what's the number one? What's the king daddy of them all? That's Bitcoin. It will always be Bitcoin. It's going to yep. become more scarce. So the demand is going to be higher. And it's just – it's all going to go – It's it, this is the, a trend that we've seen before. Five minutes of our time left. Thoughts on Ripple? Ooh. Thoughts on Because, I mean, Ripple's the one that everyone loves. So here's my take on Why it. Why really does everyone quick. love Ripple? That's the thing. There's too much love for it. Yeah. You know the, why? And I've seen hate and love on Bitcoin. I've seen hate and love on Litecoin. I've seen hate and love on Ethereum. Actually, people don't talk about Ethereum that much. But 
I have only heard good things about Ripple. And when I only hear good things about something and nothing negative ever, and anytime I walk into a coffee shop, people are like, Ripple, 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 institutional banks, European (laughs) Union. I'm like, "Mm." and I go look at the chart, I'm like, lame. I just don't don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I mean, no, do you want to go first with your analysis? We can make some money on it. Like, I'm, I've made like uh, Jim, you can make money on anything. Yes, okay, it's true. granted. So I've, I've traded Ripple. I just don't think mass market, loves the it. mass market's really going to love and get behind it. Okay. I think you can have conversation and talk about anything, right? Who? Do but you, at the end of the day, what do the numbers say? Yeah. Who utilizes Ripple the most? What is Ripple known for? Transacting faster. It's faster and cheaper than Bitcoin, man. I mean, Ripple would be used as a tool at the institutional. Ripple is a... Institutional oh, type point. coin. Yeah, good, right? good, good. What if it becomes so institutionalized it's just not volatile? I, Which is I don't think it's gonna. gonna I don't think it's gonna have price action, no yeah, volatility, I. and I don't think the price of it monetarily is gonna be because it's backed that way. Interesting. Okay, it, so that, it, that's this, a good point. This will be used more as a tool for, um, like, man, you're looking at the futures coming out. These institutions, these funds, these central banks, big banks uh, are are utilizing that are utilizing Ripple, then they're going to utilize that as a tool. Whether they hard fork it, whether they build something off of it, I, that's to be determined. But Ripple is more is more going to be used for a corporate type of entity than it will be for us. I agree. Interesting. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Well, some of that funnels back to control. Yeah. Exactly. Or it all funnels back to control. All funnels back to control. That's very fascinating. Guys, this has been a great discussion. Good. This has been very good. Hey, man, thanks it's so much for your pleasure. time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, so let's go look at those rigs. <laughs> <laughs> let's go check them out. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, make sure you pledge, become a member of the IR4 podcast. Um, we're posting every day on Facebook and on the uh, the Patreon page. So thanks for your support. We appreciate it. Um Put your sign off again. (laughs) Love, live, learn, folks. You guys are amazing. Have a great day.